Hello everyone, Jobin Blue here with the long-awaited RPCS3 July 2017 progress report video version. Let's go ahead and just jump right into it. It turns out that RPCS3 has quite an impressive ongoing record, being that this month, like every before it, set a new record for the number of improvements. There's so many improved games that they just can't cover them all in one report, as well as it's just kinda boring to hear me say Red Dead looks better and still needs some improvements though, or whatever. RPCS3 is also doing so well that it is now running at version 0.0.3. The numbers don't really mean anything, but it gets us all hyped, so I'm fine with it. There are a lot of things on this changelog from 002 to 003. I'm not going to go through all of them here, but there's a link in the description if you want to check out the full changelog. There are some fundamental topics and new implementations. I'll cover those later and we'll look at the games first. As I said before, there are so many games that have been improved that it would just be ridiculous to try and cover every single improvement and you don't want to sit through all of that. So with that in mind, they decided to stick to all the games that are just interesting to hear about or something has changed. First off, we have the wheel comparison. I guess they decided to change the format this time. At first glance, this may look worse, but they tested 100 new games and even with that, the amount that are now playable and in-game are up, as well as the ones that do nothing or are just barely loadable, went down, so that's always good. Now onto the actual games themselves. All of the Atelier games had drastic improvements in performance and now run at a solid 30 FPS. There are still what appear to be little graphical issues, which aren't actually that little. Gather spots and save points are invisible, which are two huge central aspects to the gameplay. Thus, despite being stable performance-wise, these games are not considered playable yet, except for Shali, where you can see the gathering spots. Nobody has tested the Japan-only release of Sophie yet. Beyond Two Souls renders its graphics a lot better now, but its performance is still very slow and there are some major glitches. It's an impressive game from a technical and graphical standpoint, so the fact that it does this much is just amazing. A bug affecting Demon Souls since April, causing hanging on loading screens, was fixed this month with only 5 lines of code. It is now playable to the point where some people have actually beaten it. The last thing that they talk about is that someone made a 21 by 9 aspect ratio patch for the game like some others before it. Drakengard 3 went from doing nothing to basically playable, but sometimes it drops to about half of the FPS and at other times it'll randomly crash. This game also has a bad frame rate on a real PS3, so they suspect that it will be a very demanding game to run when it gets fixed. Hatsune Miku Project Diva F 2nd went from just the menus to being flawlessly playable at full speed. Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 were mentioned in my video improvements video for August, but just to reiterate, 1.5 is fully playable and 2.5 isn't considered considered fully playable yet because it still freezes sometimes. Persona 5 is now fast enough to be considered playable and many people have beaten it from start to finish, saying that they got decent performance and acceptable graphics. Further coverage of this game is questionable considering the Atlas controversy which required RPCS3 to take down all mention of Persona 5 from their website, including their progress reports. Red Dead has improved some from KD11 and some of the models render fine and is semi-playable to the point that someone has beaten about 20% of the game. Skate 3 saw improvements to graphics and performance, some of the broken, flickering graphics have been fixed. It's stable, but not considered playable because it's not fast enough yet. White Knight Chronicles saw graphical and performance improvements from KD11, and it's to a point where it almost looks perfect, and on fast CPUs, it could be considered playable. Next up, we have the Tales of games. They're working a lot better, and someone has actually beaten Tales of Graces. There's a Tales of Vesperia ultra-wide patch, and Tales of Zelia is now running at 60 FPS during battles. It was not one specific huge thing responsible for this, but a bunch of little things. With Tales of Bazaria, it hangs whenever you start controlling the character. Lastly, the Yakuza games 3, 4, 5, and Dead Souls all went from doing nothing to being in-game from the LLE GCM. They are running pretty stable, but are too slow as of right now. They also uploaded a ton of screenshots for a bunch of random games that were improved. Army of Two kind of looks like Sherbert right now. The Brothers A Tale of Two Sons game looks good. Uh, we got New Vegas, Modern Warfare 3, Dragon's Crown, Dragon's Quest Builders, Devil May Cry, Shadow of Mordor looks like Thermal Vision. The PS3 exclusive Heavenly Sword looks good. Next up we have Revengeance, Oddworld, Ninja Gaiden, Oblivion, Skyrim, Prince of Persia, and Trine. Just an absolute massive number of games that were changed. 
Next up, we have some mini reports for some of the major improvements this month. The huge LLE GCM improvement has been merged with RPCS3. A lot of the videos from the video improvements video I made back in August and in the June progress report saw a lot of improvements from this feature. It led to huge improvements with compatibility and stability. Two of the biggest games affected by this are Red Dead Redemption, which can actually go past the menus without crashing, and Persona 5, which no longer suffers from random crashing. Also, The Last of Us can actually show the initial loading screen rather than just instant crashing. There are so many games that were affected by this awesome improvement. Next up, there are some general Linux improvements as well as app image support. And RPCS3 went into greater detail into a separate post. It talks about the history of Linux and its future with RPCS3. At the beginning, none of the games worked and the debugger, frame rate counter, and firmware installer were broken as well. They fixed the latter issues pretty quickly but found it difficult to fix an issue where games would hang after running for a few seconds being caused by the thread sync bugs. There was a commit back in April that revolutionized Linux with RPCS3 and the usability spiked, but their recompiler was broken for a lot of people. They fixed the issue by using quote unquote rare compiler flags. It's now basically identical to how the Windows version works and seems to be a very easy thing to set up. There is controller support in the form of EV Dev, which they have a guide on setting up as well. Lastly, all the games during this segment were actually taken on Linux computers. The next topic is fixed low level synchronization primitives bugs. These are used by multi threaded software, aka everything. Some games affected are Demon Souls, which went from a crash mess to now being playable as mentioned earlier, Hatsune Mika Project Diva F second which went from just the main menu to playable, Nino Kuni does not have random crashes after battles, there aren't any more menu crashes for the Atelier games, and the sound mixer thread for Catherine was greatly improved. KD11 had some major emulation improvements fixing bugs for games like Persona 5 and Red Dead Redemption which have also seen performance improvements. An issue with a lot of the games being blue were fixed and the Vertex upload performance was improved especially with Vulcan, which is apparently being worked on. KD11 has also helped to improve the SPU emulation. It's much more accurate to the way that the real SPUs are handled on a real PS3, and with these improvements, we see games like Demon's Souls no longer have lag spikes, and it stays closer to 30 FPS. Going over some of the developer-specific stuff, H. Corian was responsible for app images and stuff for Linux, as well as KirbyFan64 implementing the controller handler for EV Dev. Mega Mouse added a thing to the GUI to now show that a game is using a custom configuration and made it so that the incompatible CPUs won't allow RPCS3 to run instead of just crashing. They were also responsible for finishing the move to Qt. Ripley Tom fixed broken saving and loading in Persona 5 as well as fixed dead zones for X input controllers. Dangles91 fixed saving and loading in Akiba's trip. This is huge. Flashfire implemented a save manager for RPCS3. And this will allow you to have more save files for games that use a PlayStation 3's OS saving, but of course this doesn't work for games that use in-game saving like Dishonored. They also hope to improve the save manager in general. As for some upcoming things in closing words, Nekotechna is working on LIB LV2 which will enhance compatibility as well as add more modules to the LLE so that it can download data. I'm not entirely sure what the capabilities of that are though. They are improving the LLVM so that things can compile faster. KD11 is working on Xcalling which will improve performance and some bugs with the LLE GCN. And they are also reworking the Vertex upload which will also improve performance and they tease that this will help you with popular games so probably P5 or Red Dead. Make sure that you also support them on Patreon if you can. Back in August they were close to $3,000 per month at which point KD11 could work on RPCS3 full time and increase the rate of progress. I believe that they have now since reached this goal. So that'll wrap it up for RPCS3's July 2017 progress report. This has been Jobin Blue. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.